In this movie, I'm going to show you how to change the size and resolution at which an image prints. And we're going to do so without harming a single pixel inside the image. In other words, the image size will not change. I'm working inside that version of the graphic that I scanned at a high resolution. Now there's two ways to change the size at which an image prints. One is to go to the file menu and choose the print command, or you can press that standard keyboard shortcut, control P or command P on a Mac. Now we'll be discussing printing in a lot more detail in the future chapter. But for now, just know that the print command is designed for printing to a local device. That is a printer that's attached directly to your machine or on a network in a home or office. It does not define the size at which an image commercially reproduces or places inside of another application like Illustrator or InDesign. Now, if you look at the preview, you'll see that we have a horizontal image printing on a vertical page. I don't want that, so I'll go ahead and switch to the second layout icon. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and expand this image so it takes advantage of every bit of the printable area of the page, then I'd go ahead and turn on this checkbox, Scale to Fit Media. But let's say that's not big enough. I want it to print even wider so it fills the page vertically as well. I'll turn off scale to fit media, and then I'll change the width value to say 12 inches. And the scale value automatically changes to more than 130%. Now bear in mind that the print command neither adds nor subtracts pixels inside the image. So because we're expanding the image, fewer pixels will print in any given inch, and the resolution value automatically drops down to 764 PPI. At this point, you can either click the print button in order to actually print the image, or you can click done to save this information with the file. Now I'm going to choose that command again, just so that you can see that the changes were made. I'll go up to the file menu and choose the print command. And sure enough, our scale value is still more than 130%. The width value is 12 inches and the print resolution is 764. So I'll go ahead and cancel out. Now the reason I'm making this point is there's a kind of disconnect between the print command and the image size command. The print command pays attention to what you do inside the image size dialog box, but the image size command does not pay attention to what happens inside the print dialog box. Now that may at first seem like a bad thing, it's actually a really great thing because it means you have independent control over how your image commercially reproduces and how it prints to a local device. So let's say we want to change the size at which the image commercially reproduces. Go up to the image menu and choose the image size command. And then notice that we have the same old values here in the document size area. So the width value is 9 inches, not 12. The resolution value is 1,000 pixels per inch, not 764 or whatever it was inside the print dialog box. Now notice this image size information up at the top. The width of the image is 9,180 pixels and the height is 6,318 pixels. I make note of that because if I change the width value to 12 inches, those values pop up. The width value becomes 12,000 pixels and the height becomes 8,259. And the size of the image in RAM grows from this was value, 166 megabytes approximately, to more than 283 megabytes, which is a whopping difference. Not only that, if I click OK, it will appear as if Photoshop has panned me to a new location. I'm actually at the same location I was. The problem is that the image has been rewritten. So I'll press the H key and scroll back to the eyes. And you can see that they're actually larger than they were before. Photoshop has added pixels to this image. So if I press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac, this is the before version of the image and this is the after version. Now it's a big problem that Photoshop has rewritten these pixels because if you look closely, we have softer transitions between the details because Photoshop has gone into this file and averaged the original detail. This is what's known as a destructive modification because Photoshop has rewritten every single one of what are now 99 million pixels inside the file. And that's not only absolutely absurd, it's a bad thing to do because we're adding file size and it's actually not doing us any good. In fact, it's doing the image harm. So I'm going to press Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to get back to my undamaged image. Then I'll go up to the image menu and choose the image size command. This time I'll turn off resample image. Anytime you'd want to change just the print size and resolution values without harming the image, this checkbox goes off. And now I could either dial in a width value of 12 inches and I'd see a resolution value of 765 inside the image size dialog box, so a slight disconnect from what we saw in the print dialog box, 
Or I could say, you know what, I've got plenty of pixels inside this file. I'm going to take the width value up to, let's say, 34 inches. That drops the resolution value to 270. That's still more than 267, however, so I have enough pixels to create a whopping big print. Now I'll click OK in order to apply that change, and notice nothing happens to the image. It is not harmed in the least. And that's because all we did was change three numerical values, width, height, and resolution, and that's all. And I should mention, by the way, that this version of the image contains a total of 58 million pixels, which is more than you can capture with any digital camera. So it's a very large file. All right, now just to see what the print dialog box did, let's go up to the file menu and choose the print command. And sure enough, all that information has been updated. So we're seeing a scale value of 100%, a print resolution of 270, a width value of 34 inches, and so forth. And now I could scale the image to fit the media if I wanted to, or I could decide to just print a detail from the file. And if you want to do that, then you turn off the center checkbox right there, and you can drag the image directly inside the preview window, and then either click the print button to print it, or click done in order to save that information along with the file. And that's how you change both the size and resolution at which an image will print here in Photoshop.